Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Sanctuary is so beautiful, and we are blessed by these stained glass windows. Absolutely gorgeous. And I want to direct your attention to this one, where Jesus is teaching his disciples. In this time of prayer, I also want to invite you to hold your hands out in a spirit of receiving, and I invite you to pray after me. Let us pray. Holy God, fill us with your heart. Fill me with your love. Help me to be your instrument of peace. Help me to be your agent of love. Help me to be your instrument of reconciliation. And help me to truly accept the grace and the love that you have for me. In Christ our Lord's name. Amen. The Beatitudes have been called the ordination address to Jesus' disciples. They have also been called the Magna Carta of God's kingdom, and they are the essence of Jesus' teaching. He's teaching them a new ethic. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in spirit, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called the children of God. But you know, sometimes, sometimes we fail to be meek, don't we? Sometimes we fail to be merciful, and sometimes we fail to be pure in heart and peacemakers. Sometimes we're just honoring. I mean, we're in church. Shouldn't we just tell the truth? Sometimes we're just plain, downright ornery, aren't we? Sometimes we're crass. Sometimes we're truculent. Sometimes we're arrogant, demanding. Sometimes we just fly off the handle, don't we? Sometimes we do that. You've never seen me in traffic, but it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> you don't want to see that. Sometimes when we look in our own hearts, we know just how far we've fallen from the ethic that Jesus gives us. 
You know, sometimes when we look in our own hearts, we know just how far we've fallen from the goal that Jesus set for us. I've had people say to me before, Preacher, preacher, you know, I I just don't deserve the good news. You, You don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've lived. Preacher, I just don't deserve the good news. And I imagine if we're really honest with ourselves here this morning, I imagine if we're really honest and we really look inside our hearts, there have been times that we've thought, I don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't warrant that kind of grace that has been given to me. You know, the Greek word for sin literally means to miss the mark, karmatia, to miss the mark. And you know, the Apostle Paul said it so well. You know, to be human is to miss the mark. The Apostle Paul said that, you know, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And in those times when we've really fallen short, when we've really disappointed the people that we love, when we fail to be who we've been called to be, it's easy in those times to really question whether God could ever really forgive us, whether God could ever really truly love us, whether God could ever truly accept us. And that's why as Christians it's so important to have a robust understanding of atonement. That's why it's so very important to have a robust understanding of grace. For you see, we are saved not by what we have done. We are saved not by our works. We are saved truly and only by God's grace. It is a grace that we don't deserve. It is a grace that we haven't earned. It is a grace that God has given to us freely, without merit, without any ability to deserve it. It is a grace freely given, and what we have to do is accept it, to truly accept it into ourselves. Walter Wangeren is a Lutheran pastor and a writer, and he tells about a time, uh, and those of us who are parents, we, we have all been there at some point in our life, and he tells about a time he had more children than just this, but he's t- telling about a time that he's trying to put two of his boys to bed. And, and Matthew is eight years old, and Matthew is rambunctious, full of energy, And so, of course, to put him to bed, you know, Wangren is a good pastor, and he's wanting to make sure his children have prayed that night. So he's putting them to bed, and they're saying their prayers. And and he's working so hard at it. But Matthew, he's just got the energy, and he jumps out of bed, and he has to go get his baseball cards. And then he jumps back in bed. And then, of course, once he's in bed, the father's trying to pray again, but then Matthew remembers, I didn't brush my teeth. So he jumps out of bed and goes to brush his teeth. And then the father is start praying again, and then Matthew remembers, oh, I need to go to the bathroom. So he jumps out of bed, and he runs to the bathroom. And, and there finally, the father's patience had broken. He could take no more, and he just gets off in a huff and starts to walk out of the room. And, and the boys, they yell out, Dad, aren't we going to pray? Aren't we going to pray? And the father says, no, we've worn out the prayer for tonight. And then he huffs and starts to walk down the hallway. And they go, Dad, Dad, what about our hug? And the father says, there's no hug tonight. And he storms down the hallway. And you know what the father did? He held on to that anger. He took that anger to bed with him. He didn't work through that anger. He didn't give it to God in prayer that night. He took it to bed with them. The next morning, they're all getting ready for school, and and the mother's yelling out for the children to come to breakfast. All of them come downstairs for breakfast, except Matthew's missing. 
The eight-year-old's not there yet. And the father yells out for him, Matthew! He goes, yes, Dad? Why haven't you come for breakfast? Your mother has called. Did you not hear her? Yes, Dad. I heard her. Well, why didn't you come? Because she didn't say it twice. And then, you know, there's a problem being gifted verbally, right? And Walter Wangren is certainly gifted verbally. And he finally had lost all patience, and he just let it loose. He let it loose. He, he just condemned Matthew to every form of hell you could condemn him to. He just lost his temper and just totally let it loose. And then poor Matthew, the eight-year-old, has to go to school that way. It's the end of the day now. And, of course, Walter's feeling bad about what he did the night before. He's feeling bad about breakfast. He's carried it with him all day. And, and, and so it's time for the kids to come home. And everybody has come home but Matthew. And, and they go, where's Matthew? And nobody's seen him. And, and they check the school. He's not there. They send people out into the neighborhoods. They can't find him anywhere. And then finally some time goes by, and the father sees him. And he's walking across the park, making his way home. And, and the father goes out to greet him and to meet him. And he says, Matthew, you ran away? And Matthew goes, yes, Dad, I did. And he goes, and the father hopefully goes, but you've come home. And the son goes, yes, I saw a man in the park, and I thought he was going to kidnap me, and I was scared, and I came home. And the father was just totally dejected at that point full of self-loathing of himself for what he had done, full of self-loathing for the temperature that he created in his household. And he takes his son home. And, and he goes into his office. He's not talking to his family. He hides away in his office full of books. And there he sits for more than 30 minutes, totally dejected, totally disappointed in himself, going, how could I have ever let this happen how could I let this get out of control? And, and he's sitting there, and he's crying to himself quietly. And the son walks down the hallway, and he looks in, and he sees his dad there. And he says, Dad, are, are you okay? And Matthew goes in, and the father says, No, well, yeah, I'm okay. Dad, Dad, are you sick? And, and the father goes, well, no, well, yes. And then the son sees the father's tears. And he walks over to his father. And he pats him on the knee. And he says, oh, dad, I love you. I love you still, dad. It's okay. I love you. Walter Wangren wrote, that child had no right to forgive me. And you know... Wangren's right. He didn't deserve that forgiveness. But you know, that's what grace is. Grace is unmerited, undeserved, total, free, unmerited grace. And you know, that's what we receive when we come down to the altar. We receive a grace even greater than that. We receive a grace even greater than that, a grace when we take the bread and we take the cup, a grace that loves us and accepts us and challenges us and enables us to be the people God calls us to be. Free, open, unmerited, amazing grace given to you and me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.